Two of the more powerful stories that resonate with me were uh, Sibby Chena, uh, a, a partner in, in Calgary, um, caught and donated her hair and then shaved her head when her partners rallied around and raised over $100,000 in support of her. Um, she shared uh, stories with me about her niece, who uh, was 32 and going through that experience. And uh, one of the last shavers is a gent, Peter Brown, and uh, he took the mic while he was having his head shaved. And, he talked about a family member of his who was literally up the street um, from the meeting uh, in, in the hospital having treatment. Um, and, and those were powerful messages for that group to hear. Um, it was also incredible uh, for me to be in that kind of a room uh, with those people, uh, so committed to helping us move our mission forward. And um, incredible, amazing opportunities coming from that that we're continuing to pursue and explore um, but those two uh, events were, you know, put us on another level when it comes to the shave, and uh, it was uh, it was amazing to be part of uh, them and to have them in that year of twenty one twenty two. Um, but uh, I said the word for twenty one twenty two was intense, uh, so it wasn't without challenge. Like all those amazing opportunities and, and the, the push on program, um, uh, was also a time when we had you know supreme HR challenges. I would say. Um, some, uh, some key people uh, moving on to other things and some challenges finding new people and keeping them um, meant we had more pressure on our team than ever before. And uh, it's really kind of given me a perspective uh, that I shared with our insight team last night um, that if YAG is having that kind of pressure and that kind of struggle, uh, I bet a lot of organizations are and I bet a lot of companies are as well. Um, so as challenging as it can be to deal with some of these companies and organizations, I, uh, 
I'm going to suggest that we do our best to give them a little bit of patience and a benefit of the doubt because, uh, man, uh, we really struggle to keep things together um, and, uh, and are thankfully in a much stronger place now um, and, and looking forward to continuing the growth to, to get back to the operational excellence that we have always had and, and strive to, to keep pushing. Um, uh, one of the many cool things we did in COVID was, was start a documentary. Um, with a, a yacker, uh, a peripheral buddy of mine who's a fun story of how we're, we're buddies, but um, that was following Mike Daw uh, early in his cancer experience. And we are going to uh, share with you uh, a few minutes of the documentary that we've been working on uh, with the a talented and, and awesome Roger Monder. Um, and then we'll have a chat with Mike on the other side. So I'm going to get Danny to fire up that that little video and give you a, a teaser of what's to come with this amazing documentary. Well, if I was asked, how would I approach a new cancer diagnosis having been in this situation for a little over a year now, I would say to anyone, be kind to yourself, be patient, be aware of the, the pain, be aware of the emotional side of things, let them out and have a good cry when you need to. But find your own way through it. I hope that anyone that's going through a similar situation that I faced in the last year and continue to go through, that you can find whatever way of coping in your own outlets that you need. Arts, music, exercise, whatever it is. Find what it is to you, your one-size-fits-one approach. Whatever you got to do, do it. If you feel alone, because that's all too easy in this, lean on the people around you, your partner, your family, your friends. There's people that, though they're not going through it too, they want to be there for you, they want to help. It's so easy to feel alone in this because you're the name on the page and you're the client that's going into the, the hospital. But there's so many people in your life that you can lean on and find support. Just ask for help. Go to all your appointments. If there's things you can control and positively influence, do them. And buy into those things because there's so many things you can do to hopefully turn this ship around. But at the end of the day, be patient, be kind, love yourself, and always, always try to find the light in the darkness. Mike Da, you always get me right in the fields. Um, Sheila Garland, uh, Yak Research Partner, huge Yak Champion, uh, lead on the Yak Prime study joining us. Thanks so much for making time, Sheila. Oh my gosh, it's hard to um, sit here and not actually um, uh, express all of the, the feels that that video brings up. Yeah, Mike has uh, got this combination of uh, power and, and moving forward uh, in, with the pain. Uh, and being crazy open and honest and real and raw. Vulnerable. Uh, yeah, he is that. He's, he knows how to be that way. Um, so that this real, uh, you know, he touches on so many important things. And as we we often talk about, is cancer is so different for young adults, uh, young families, starting careers, finishing school, these developmental milestones. Um, and I know you've connected with a lot of young adults uh, in your practice and through YAC events and uh, through the Prime study. We've seen crazy stuff uh, on mental health and, and some of the struggles on the re returning back to whatever normal is. Um, what stands out for you? Is there a biggest piece of the prime data that you're like, wow, that one really surprised me or got me? Uh, well, I think as it relates to, you know, Mike's experience, um, you know, it really gives the the personal story to you know, the impact that that experience has on, you know, going forward um, and impact on family and relationships, but particularly, particularly around like fears of, of recurrence um, and understanding that, you know, that 
uh, isn't unique necessarily to young adults to experience fear of recurrence. But, you know, the fact that young adults are going to be living longer um, after having cancer than they did before they had cancer, um, that's where it becomes a little bit, you know, more impactful because uh, we were able to dig a little bit deeper and find out that a significant portion of the people who we um, uh, we heard from in the Act Prime study were spending three or more hours sort of like feeling consumed by some of these thoughts of, you know, um, you know, if my cancer comes back, you know, what's going to happen? And, and this is this is relevant even for, you know, people who are going to be living with cancer. It may not be, is my cancer going to come back? But, you know, is my, you know, cancer going to get worse. So even though, you know, we use the term uh, fear of cancer recurrence, it's not exclusive um, to any one group. It it consumes, you know, everybody who, who has experienced cancer in, in whatever form. Yeah, that's so true. One of the unique elements and so many, like I know Mike would have that scar on the neck and so many of us have those scars from treatment. You see them every day and that's like your, your daily reminder that you've had this crazy, challenging, powerful, traumatic experience. And, and I know what we saw in the prime data as well, uh, the recovery time, uh, getting back to normal physical mental health is so, so challenging for young adults. Uh, love that Mike is connected to Yak in the community. Uh, he, he's got a road ahead of him and we'll be there with him every step of the way. Uh, Sheila, thanks so much for joining us on Yak to the Future. And uh, well, I'm so glad to see your face uh, in our community to report to everybody on how our 21, 22 was. Awesome Thank you. Bye. Thanks so much. Awesome work. Uh, Mike Daw is here somewhere. There he is. I see you, my brother. Um, you want to unmute yourself, Mike? There he is. Um, great to see you, my man. Um, when you uh, when you see the the trailer and when you uh, you hear Sheila talking, what do you think of? First off, uh, if my wife heard you asking me to unmute me, my goodness, uh, <laughs> I don't get that too often. Now, it's great to see you. It's great to see everybody. Um, I've seen that video plenty of times, and it's, man, it just uh, it stirs up emotions. Uh, I don't know. I, I got caught off guard today. You know, I, I got some blood work back, and, like, I'm happy to say it. I'll, I'll tell you, like, like, my cancer markers, my tumor markers are down, and we set, uh, we set the dates for my next uh, treatment in hospital, and it all starts again on Tuesday of next week. And, uh, this is the whole reason that we're telling the story, man, because there's been bumps and bruises and twists and turns, but, you know, I'm uh, leaning on the people I need to. <laughs> I didn't expect to, like, my goodness, be like this, but it's just been uh, a day of uh, very welcome good news after a really, really rough stretch. And I'm so happy to tell you this, so uh, it's great, it's great. Oh, man, I'm grateful for you sharing that news, and um uh, like whoever thought any of us would want to be normal so bad in our life uh then when we get a blood test or a scan or a whatever uh, i'm so glad to hear that the markers are starting to come down and uh twists and turns is right you said it um uh, cancer is good at that that's for sure is throwing the curveballs or whatever oh other crazy analogy you want to throw at you yeah and it's it's interesting to have like this all captured on film has been uh i'd rather <laughs> be in a film about anything else uh my uh budding rap career or uh you know being the uh you know scoring the winning goal in overtime for the Habs again but uh this is not how you draw it up but you know when you guys asked me if I was open to this you know uh, my two rules were I want to have a heck of a party when we uh when we launch it and two like this isn't a highlight reel I want the unfiltered unedited real version I mean in as short as I can say it, you know, you know, I was diagnosed with metastatic thyroid cancer when my wife was 33 weeks pregnant with our second child. And we had a two-year-old already at home. I just started a new job, just moved into a new house. I had my first cancer surgery on a Monday and then she delivered our baby that Saturday night, you know, and, you know, flash forward to this September and I'm told that I'm cancer free and the party was on. And 44 hours later, I'm told that those results are inaccurate and incomplete. And I was told that my cancer was very much alive and growing. There's been everything in between, but you know, I've had plenty of meltdowns and plenty of cries and, and plenty of just days where I'm just, 
oh, it's hard to really express because there's nothing to compare to the the roller coaster of it. But to have been able to have this opportunity to have a camera in my face for 16 months now has really helped me navigate it. And it's been a great outlet. <laughs> I wish it wasn't so heavy at times, but you know, I'm very nervously excited to throw it out into the wild. Yeah. Well, I, I, I would say to you, um, we may have done a documentary with you about your budding rapping career, but we would never ever do a documentary with you scoring an overtime winner for the Habs. That would never be on. <laughs> we are we'll, we'll honestly talk. though, we're <laughs> grateful, Matt, that you might that you were up for it. Honestly, like when when we connected that morning on Signal Hill and then you know the chats we had after, um uh, we were grateful that you were up for it, uh, because it's a unique experience that you're having. But the sharing your story is uh, is going to connect with so many young adults just like you uh, that are going through that same kind of challenge. Um, you know, part of your whole, I would call it like almost coping mechanism, your, your processing has been to set these challenges for yourself. Uh, Cape to Cavett, right? This beautiful start of the Get You Active Challenge. Uh, and then an Ironman um, in the middle of all that. Um, and then another Cape to Cavett. Um, what's, what's next? My goodness, man. I mean, really, I just want to get back to being dad for a little bit. Like I want like my le life to be less focused on blood works and being the human lab experiment and just, I don't know, dinosaurs, monster trucks and Peppa Pig. So uh, this is how we get there. There's some days that I, like, I don't know how we got here. I've never done a drug in my life. I've been a competitive amateur athlete my whole life. I eat vegetables because I think that's a good idea. You know, I'm a registered nurse and I buy into my own health habits and I you know not just preach it no family history and this just shows man like it can happen uh it's not how you draw it up on paper but when you got two little kids looking up a dad set an example you know I can't just uh be miserable and down in the dumps I got to work with this because sadly this is a chronic condition even if we do get to remission we expect it to come back so I got to work with this. And I, my goal remains absolutely relentlessly focused on having way more good days than bad. And, you know, it's been funny, like, and I look at some of the early footage that we shot and like, I was still very much in shock mode and how much has happened in the last year, both physically, mentally, you know, twists and turns and all this, but, you know, I've gone to cancer conferences before, but as a registered nurse, um, to go to your first one as a, you know, it's funny, like you, you've had cancer for 10 minutes and someone calls you a survivor. Like the, the diagnosis isn't even, like the ink isn't even dry on the page yet. So I, I'm still kind of, I don't love being called that, but I don't think anyone does because that's just how it is. But, you know, to hear that other people are going through these things and, you know, just to, you know, to have a safe and supportive, inclusive community, doesn't matter your age or gender or background or sexuality or anything, you know, Yak has created such a safe space that certainly welcomes anybody in this part of their life in, because, you know, you just, sometimes you just need somebody, uh, you know, to, to lean on or hear of other people going through it. And there's so many different types of services and, 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 and groups and, and events. And, and cause again, you can feel so isolated in it. So I'm, I hate every single thing about this. I don't want to be here. I don't even think you want to be here, Jeff, but look at you. You had to make some lemonade out of it and make it better. I, I'd be lying to you if I said, I'd, I'd rather be volunteering or helping or, or doing something else. You know, it's not how you envision it, you know, being, oh, I'm the, the main character in the real cancer movie, but we're here and I got to work with it. So we've really yes. leaned into it and I'm just so thankful for the opportunity. Yeah. I, um, you know, when I was first diagnosed uh, a long time ago now, thankfully, um, there were some really young nurses uh, just out of nursing school that were starting on four North A, the cancer floor. Uh, and there were some nurses that were around for a long time, of course, the veterans. And they would always talk about how the cancer floor was a unique place to work. And you often had nurses that were there for six months or their whole career. And we didn't get into the reasoning for that very much, but um, I surmised um, that the reason why they were there for their whole career, those special nurses, is they were able to find 
uh, power in the pain. So they got to know a lot of patients because of the inpatient space. You're spending a lot of time with your nurses um, and, and not everybody makes it through. And, and they got to be able to turn that pain into power uh, and, and drive to keep moving forward and helping people. And, and that is how I felt about you, Mike, from the very beginning is you have that exact same superpower of taking this pain and this challenge that you're dealing with and turning it into powerful things. And uh, I can't wait to see what we do next. Uh, I can't wait to show everybody your story in this form uh, and to take it to more survivors and, and other people in our community at large. So thank you so much for making time. Uh, great to see mom and dad here. Thanks for joining us. Um, <laughs> I, um, uh, we, uh, we can't wait to take this out to the world and we can't wait for that big party. And we'll be thinking of you next week. And you know that uh, every step of the road ahead, we got your back. I just, I don't know what to say other than I'm just, you know, I, I, I get it. I, I just appreciate every word of that and to spend some time with everybody. And uh, let's make some lemonade here, man. We got to, we can't just be pissed off every day. We got to work with it. So there's great things coming down the pipeline here for sure. Love it. Awesome, man. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, gang, last couple of minutes, really, um, just because it's uh, yeah, to the future that we're doing. Uh, it's just a couple of highlights because we're so we're so excited about 23. And uh, while, of course, we're, we're already deep into our next fiscal year, um, which started out as first, technically, um, we got such cool things happening in, in addition to Mike's documentary. Um, uh, the, the second big research initiative, YAC, is continuing to move on and move forward. Uh, we're in the final stages of the protocol, and, and that'll go to that fancy ethics place after that that I know nothing about. But um, uh, we continue to move that forward, and it'll be a really exciting piece to bring out to the world uh, later this year. We're super excited about that. Uh, there is a, a, a seems to be a high likelihood, hopefully this is not a jinx message, but a high likelihood that we're going to have the first normal, normal, Shape of the Brave campaign in three years. Um, that's a crazy exciting thing. We've enjoyed the certainly the COVID versions that we've had, but uh, excited to, at the prospect of actually having community come together in schools and offices and in the public spaces uh, to have people get the most powerful haircut of their life. That'll be uh, super exciting. Uh, Karina is cooking up some some cool Yak University pilots. Uh, on the program side, really excited about that. Uh, and some other awesome things and work uh, on program side to connect young adults um, face to face. And I can't wait to share those as they, as they come. Um, and, and board growth is another key part. Uh, and that's gonna include a, a position for a yacker. Um, it's, a, it's a position that we've had uh, consistently and off and on over our, our lifetime. Uh, a board position for a yacker, um, and we're going to go and look for another one. Uh, and and if anybody out there in yak land uh, who's a yacker is interested, uh, we'd love you to send your expression of interest in. Um, it's a it's a super important part of the work that we do, uh, and we're excited about uh, bringing that back to the board space. Um, and uh, the final piece of what I would say for 23 that it, that is also in the works and exciting is around uh, the Francophone young adults um, who we've had in our hearts for a long time, um, but haven't had, uh, haven't had the, the space and the capacity to serve. Uh, and we've taken some really solid steps on, on planning around how we introduce that level of programming to those young adults. Um, because as Mike said, he talked about the isolation uh, facing young adults uh, with cancer. Um, in Quebec and in other French speaking parts of Canada, it's, it's even more isolating for them because the services are even less than, than if you can imagine, than for the Anglophones. Um, so excited about those things as an understatement and uh, uh, ending on a huge note of gratitude, honestly, uh, just a huge, uh, huge thanks to uh, everybody in the YAC community, uh, to Joey and Mike and Sheila for your participation today. Uh, to the ACT board uh, for your commitment and support of, of our work, uh, to the ACT team, uh, Les, Kareen, Ange, Sherry, Kristen, Danny, Robin, Christina, Katrina, I think I was making notes in the order of which people were, have joined. Uh, that reminds me of Miss Lena's ballerina every time I read our team. If you, if you know Miss Lena's ballerina, you know what I'm talking about. And thank you to, to all the, the volunteers, uh, the people that helped make that go. We literally have always lived on the generosity of others, the event participants, the, the donors, uh, the volunteers who make us go. 
um, or a big, huge team effort. And I am supremely grateful for every one of you. So thank you so much for making time today uh, or whenever you're viewing this. Uh, and I cannot wait till the next one. Uh, between now and then, I hope we connect directly. And uh, thanks again. Take care of the gang and we'll talk to you again soon.